saw the anguish of his soul when he pleaded with us not to do what we did. God has not forgotten our little brother Joseph. I bet God is, God is causing all of this to happen. We, the brothers recounted to each other years later, we saw the anguish of his soul as he pleaded with us. You want to look into what Joseph was feeling. That's it. His soul was anguished. There were nights that he cried until his tear ducts dried up. And he didn't even have the physiological ability to cry. Joseph is hurt. It hurts bad. It hurts deep. And it's played and replayed in his life from his brothers to Potiphar to the prison. He can't catch a break. Whew. It's a painful story. Slandered, sold, slaved, repeated and repeated emphasized but through that all oh and you know you and I know what Joseph and his brothers and and all the rest of the players in this narrative we know what they didn't but Moses the author of Genesis says I've got to make this abundantly clear to you and so he weaves almost embarrassingly too many times he weaves a statement through the narrative and a statement through the words. I'm going to rapid fire some text to you. This is pulling back the curtain between the seen and the unseen. What, we, what is seen, we've just reviewed, but what is unseen, we'll see now. Here it is, Genesis chapter 39, verse, and we'll put these verses on the screen for you. Genesis chapter 39, verse 2. The Lord was with Joseph. <laughs> you got to be kidding. What a... <laughs> What do, you, what do you mean? The Lord was with Joseph? Have you seen what's happened to his life and the Lord was with Joseph? Oh, no, no, not in our culture. The Lord is blessed when finances and health are all tip-top shape. Not Joseph's life. The Lord was with Joseph so that he prospered and lived in the house of his Egyptian master. This is when he was with Potiphar, obviously. Verse 3, keep reading. When his master saw that the Lord was with him. Do you catch Moses? He's just, he is just throwing this all through the text. When the master saw that the Lord was with him, the Lord gave him success in everything he did. When Potiphar saw it, God is with you. Verse 9, or rather verse 5 of chapter 39. From the time he put him in charge of his household and all that he owned, the Lord blessed the household of the Egyptian because of Joseph. The, Lord, the blessing of the Lord was on everything Potter had, both in the house and in the field. It, everything through the narrative, because Joseph was there, God could be there, and Potiphar was blessed. This is the unseen this is the unseen, verse 9, chapter 39 still. The, it's, it's again weaved through the, the narrative. No one is greater. This is Joseph again to Pot Potiphar's wife in his, in his resistance of this invitation. No one is greater in this house than I am. My master has withheld nothing from me except you because you are his wife. How then can I do a wicked thing and sin against God? Do you remember? As, as Genesis spells it out, as Moses writes this, there was no one left in the house. He could have gotten away with it. But Joseph, in his heart of hearts, was laying hold of the truth that God was with him. I can't do that sin. God is right here. Closed door, darkness of the night, just me and my computer screen. God is right here. Chapter 39, verse 21. The Lord was with him, Joseph. He showed him kindness and granted him favor. Now this is the jailer. In the eyes of the prison warden. The warden paid no attention to anything under Joseph's care because the Lord was with Joseph. Again, Moses, he knows how to make a point. I'm just going to keep repeating it, keep repeating. The Lord was with Joseph, the unseen. He's in a prison. He's been stripped of his identity, not once but twice. Chapter 40, Genesis chapter 40 and verse 8. 
We both had dreams. So this is our fellow prison prisoners coming to him. We both had dreams, they answered, but there is no one to interpret them. Then Joseph said to them, do not interpretations belong to God? Tell me your dreams. <laughs> you, do you catch it? Just embedded in the narrative? Interpretations only belong to God. Tell me your dream. Why? Because Joseph was laying hold of the, of the, of the promise of his deep-rooted belief that God was with him. So tell me, your, tell me your dreams. God can only do it, and God's with me. I believe it. Joseph, you're in a prison, stripped from your family, stripped from even being a slave now. Later on, when he's finally remembered, years later, and he's brought to Pharaoh. In uh, Genesis chapter 41, he's brought to Pharaoh. Pharaoh says, hey, I've got some dreams. It's verse 16. I'll put it on the screen for you. Verse 16 of chapter 41. Pharaoh says, so, so I'm going to tell you my dreams. Can you do it? I've, I've heard you did it before. And Joseph says, I cannot do it. Joseph replied to the Pharaoh, but God will give Pharaoh the answer he desires. You skip ahead to verse 25. It says, then Joseph said to Pharaoh, here's the interpretation of your dreams. Embedded in the narrative is this blatant, repeated truth. Where I am, God is. Where God is, I am. I'm with God. God's with me. What it took for Joseph to hold on to that is just incredible when you think of what his life was like. Was like. 